Now that you understand both the internal rate of return method and the net present value method, I want you to introduce a concept called the net present value profile. And you can see how these two con how the two methods are related through the net present value profile. The NPRU profile is simply just a graph that shows the net present value of a project at different discount rates. So we can take a look at our example. So we will use the numbers from the same example. So to create the net present value profile, what we have to do is really just to compute the net present value at different discount rate. Uh, as I mentioned during the MPB video that once you learn how to compute a net present value and you understand the concept, in the future, we can compute a net present value all at once. So let's try that here. So let's get, get our calculator. And this time we're going to enter all the cash flows, including cash flow in year zero. So we'll start with cash flow, we'll clear it. And we put in starting with cash flow in year zero, which is $165,000. It's an outflow because we're investing in this project. Press enter. Um, go down to cash flow in year one is $633,120. Press enter. Year two is $70,800. Again, press enter. And year three is $91,080. So again, we'll press enter. And what we need to do now is to write down, so this is very important, write down all the cash, all the net present value at different discount rates. So we'll go to NPV. To start with, we can look at what the, what the net present value is if interest rate is zero. So that essentially just adding up all the cash flows. So we can check that. So scroll down, we'll compute. It turns out that net present value at zero discount rate is $60,000. Now let's choose a different discount rate. Let's say we want to look at the discount rate when um, the net present value when discount rate is say 4%. So we put in 4%, enter, scroll down, we'll press compute. As expected, discount rate goes up, net present value, uh, net present value goes down. So now at a discount rate of 4%, net present value goes down to $42,000. We can look at, again, what the net present value is. Let's say discount rate is at 8%. So we change the interest rate to 8%, go to net present value, compute again, and we have net present value of $26,000. Remember that we had a discount rate of 12%, which was our original discount rate. We saw when we can compute, and that present value is $12,000. I think you get the idea. What you want to do is compute net present value at different discount rates. So you can compute net present value at discount rate of 18%, for example. And press compute again. Notice that as interest rate keeps going up, net present value keeps going down. And that's really the, per the intent and the purpose of computing the net present value profile. And we can draw this graph. So on the x-axis is the discount rate. So we can look at 2%, 4%, 6%, 8%, 12%. And then on the y-axis is the net present value. So this graph is the net present value profile. It shows the net present value um, at different discount rates. There's one specific net present value that we want to um, point your attention to, and that is the net present value of zero. Remember that the definition of the internal rate re of return is the discount rate that sets the net present value exactly equal to zero. And you see that the, the discount rate at which the net present value equal to zero is approximately 16%. And remember that when we compute the net internal rate of return is 16.13%. So the net present value profile help to show the relationship between net present value and discount rate and what the internal rate of return really is. Something that's very important is um, students oftentimes say, I would choose a discount rate of 12%. This is very important. You do not have a choice on the discount rate. The discount rate is the required return by investors given the risk of the project. You are the manager of a firm. You cannot choose what the investor is required. If I can choose 
there are some things I can choose. You can choose what projects to invest in, but you cannot choose what investors demand of you because you're, you're, you may think of your boss as a manager, but if you are the manager, who is your boss? Well, ultimately it's other investors because the investors are the owner of the firm. These are the shareholders. They are the one who will be giving money to the firm to invest in projects. So as a manager, you cannot choose to give investor a 12% return because if that is not good enough, the investors will not give you the money. So you have no choice. Um, it's similar to you going to the bank and say, I want to choose to borrow at 1% interest rate. The bank will say, no, you're not going to get the money. And if you don't get the money, you cannot invest in the project. So you cannot choose the discount rate. You can choose the project that generate positive net present value, or you can choose a project that has an internal rate of return that is greater than the required return. So again, in this example, the required return was 12%, and at 12%, this project has a positive net present value, and also um, at, has an internal rate of return of 16%, which is greater than 12%. But you don't have a choice of 12%. That was the that's the requirement that's given to you by the investor.